Okay, so you can get started. Once again, we are RSA Professional Engineers of Software. Our team members include me, Tim Tosavia, Marcelo Gaudete to my right, Justin Scorza, and Andrew Boch to my left. And we are developing at-home programming hearing aids, which you can program at home. Let us continue to the background and motivation of this project, explain why we want to develop this device. First of all, Audiologist visits take time and money. I'm sure you guys remember the story we shared with you previously about Don and his hearing aid experience. He had to constantly visit the audiologist twice a week just to get minor settings tweaked. And at the time, the audiologist was the only person with equipment and software to do it. The second reason, existing hearing aid software is really hard for the average users to operate. Another story is Don's friend tried to eliminate the audiologist business by purchasing his own programmer and software, yet the money he spent on it was not worth the time he had, to, he had to spend learning the whole project, learning the whole program, which took him several months, cost him several thousands of dollars. Third point is current patches are way too expensive. Hearing aids cost in the price range of $3,000 to $6,000, which is a really hefty price. And our fourth point, is developing nations have little or no access to an audiologist. In fact, in Shanghai, China, there's only one audiologist for every 250,000 people. So these are all the these are all the needs that we need to address, and what motivated us to continue developing this project. Yes. Next, I'll pass it on to myself. Thank you, Tim. So with the program presented to us, the client came up with clear expectations. We're looking to design a sleep user friendly interface that everyone can be able to operate without even any advanced programming. We want to provide a method that allows users to actually be able to program settings by themselves. And we want to allow the user to save those settings for better usage. We also want it to be able to communicate with whatever the hardware teams are. Uh, with all these expectations, we came up with um, our program definition. As you can see, it's a very long program definition, so we tie it out to many key elements that we want to focus on. We want to develop a user-friendly program that the user can be able to program and we want it to be accessible, very user-friendly and fast. We want to create an online database that the user can save the settings on and be able to retrieve them at any time they want. And we also want it to interact with a forest sensory platform that um, the general hardware is developing. I will pass it on to Justin, who is going to walk you through the objectives. Now, this objective tree is to help us look at some of the main objectives we want to accomplish in our project. And just to go over a few of the main points, we want it to be user-friendly. That means we want it to be easy to install and easy to use. Second, we want it to be maintainable. That means that we provide good documentation so that it's able to be upgraded in the future as needed. And lastly, we want it to be efficient. That means using as little CPU power as possible, but effectively having almost no user wait time. Next, just look at a few of our requirements and specifications. First, we want to make sure that our product works on all Windows operating systems. Second, we want our product to be easy to navigate through. You can see directly from a picture of our program here. We want to be really clear what you need to do to get through the program. We also want the install time to be between 15 and 45 seconds, depending on the speed of the computer. We want to include the online user database so that users can upload their settings and then re-download them to access those settings from any computer anywhere. We want to make sure that we work closely with the internal hardware team so that our sound is optimized fully so that no matter where you are or what computer you're using, you know that you're always hearing the same sound and it's being programmed correctly. And lastly, we want you to be able to uh, program your hearing aid with multiple settings for different environments so that you can plan ahead and 
create different environmental settings for where you might find yourself in, in the future. I'll hand it off. Thank you. All right, so standards are one of the most important things in a project because uh, they help you follow some sort of guideline. So since we are a software team, uh, we do a lot of coding. And when it comes to coding, you need to be careful because there's a lot of code floating around in the, the net um, that you don't know where it came from or if it's open source, you'll be allowed to use it. So that's one thing that we need to be wary of, and that's uh, we need to obtain all code that we did not go to. Um, next, you have the .NET Framework 3.5 uh, standards. Basically, what we're saying there is anything that is not within the th version 3.5 of the .NET Framework, um, any features or anything like that, we cannot use. Um, then we also have the WAV files. Uh, any, we are outputting WAV files to the sound card that the internal hardware team is using. So we need to follow that same format. And then lastly, although we are software, uh, we also we are interacting with two uh, hardware teams. Uh, so we have a hardware standard, yes, standard as well, which is USB 3.0, which is how we're interfacing. We also have constraints. And the biggest thing with software for our constraints is timing. We really focus on timing. And you can see we have install time, we have user wait time, which we've said is we want it to be zero. We don't want the user to wait at all. Um, we have the time that it takes to identify a programmer, the time it takes to burn uh, a hearing uh, or setting to the hearing aid. And, and then the last constraint we have, which is our only non-time constraint, is environmental constraint, which is uh, it must work on any Windows environment. All right. I'll pass it up to Tim. Okay, I'll take the time to explain the morphological charts we developed to help us select our prototype. So, this morph chart right here, we made specifically for the ASMIC application, which is one aspect of our project. This chart was developed to help us come up with ideas to select for our prototype. In the blue row here, you can see a list of, of functions and needs. And right below these needs, we have another list of means, which we can they can choose from, make some different combinations, and compare to see which selection will be best. So the first chart here is for our ASMIC's application. The second one is for communicating with the hearing aid. The third is for web database. And the fourth is for interacting with the internal hardware team. So to quantitatively score which of these more charts is the best, we we selected a ranking system for each one of the means and then put a weight on which ones we thought were more important. After summing the total, we have highlighted here the best concept for our prototype. So this particular scoring table is for the Asworks application. The second one correlates to communicating with the hearing aid. The third is for the web database. And the fourth is for interacting with internal hardware. All right, so naturally after concept selection, uh, we'll start our implementing of the actual prototype. So here's our functional decomposition level one, or level zero diagram, sorry. Uh, and what we've called the project as a whole is the Azworks application. And basically what this does is it helps to modulate the different parts in our project. So as you can see, we have four different parts. Windows Forms application, a web database, local database, and a C++ module. Uh, we'll go into each of those uh, in greater detail. But the main functionality for the whole thing is it allows you to create, store, recall, and program hearing aid configurations. So first of all, I'm going to go into the C++ module. Now, uh, the main point of this module is to actually program the ASP chip uh, in order to burn the, hearing, uh, burn the settings onto the hearing aid. Now, this has been our main focus for this semester um, because this is mainly our last part to, to implement uh, or to get it working in general. Uh, so we started off with this flowchart. This is a, the current method that we've been looking into. And as you can see, the Azure application communicates with the C++ module, which will tell the high pro to program the hearing aids. Uh, but we've had some problems with that. Uh, one, we have received new hearing aids, uh, which created uh, a little bit of a challenge in that the uh, Prams program, it was called Prams, this was recommended by one of our clients, uh, Dan Wiggins, uh, is an on semiconductor hybrid program. And these hearing aids are not on semiconductor hybrids. But 
uh, for us, problems simply invoke solutions. So what we've done is we have, uh, come, a, a solution was proposed, and after talking to Dan, and we basically said, uh, or he, he uh, recommended we actually control the current program, which we have successfully implemented. Uh, this program is created by New Sound, the, the same people who gave us the hearing aids, and we have successfully programmed the hearing aids using it. So he said, let's uh, automate it or send commands using like the Windows API, uh, and you can do that just using a Visual Basic script uh, and automate it to actually do what we want, just all running in the background. <coughs> All right, so now that's the C++ module. Uh, now I'll pass it off to Marcel, which is doing the web database. Okay, I'm going to talk to you guys about the web database, and it is my pleasure to present to you the newly created uh, RSM online web database. With the scripting languages like PHP, using the MySQL database, we were able to actually come up with our beautiful members on the web database. <laughs> 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 Nothing is displayed to the user until they log in. They log in with their username and password, and they are taken to this page that's going to welcome them and put, um, show them all the menu that there is. We have all main menus, we have the settings, have the downloads where they can actually download the, the application, some tutorials just in case, and the account management page. So, as we have presented to you guys, the settings are the most important part of our project. So let's say the user actually selects settings, they will be taken to this page, that's when I display the table of what the settings and we didn't just stop there because let's say the user has 50 to 100 um, saved settings. We, we thought it would be better to actually allow them to search and be able to remember. Let's say they remember the last title they saved. So they will search for, for example, in the final moment, they want to set. And as you can see, I for example, search for music, and it's only gonna display the music environment over here to this world. Also, you can even search by the last titles you actually save, and as you can see, if I just type in title, it's gonna display anything that has title in this world. It doesn't just say title, it's gonna display anything that has that little fragment of whatever it is. So we are very excited about this, and I will pass it on to Tim and Marcel. Okay, I'll explain the Windows Form application. Oh, now this, this application here is the heart of the whole software development here, because it's solely the user interface, what the user is going to be, how he's going to be programming his hearing aids, and what steps are necessary to do so. The functionality of this, is to provide easy to use user interface, but it allows the user to create, store, and recall settings, which you previously know. Here is a flowchart, which we use as a development tool to help us go through the steps, but instead of going through each discrete step, we thought we'd go ahead and do a walkthrough of how the program works for any average user. First off, now that we have the database working, upon opening the program, the user will have to first insert his username and password to log into the system. And then he gets well, to the main web page here, the main Windows form. From here he has three simple options which he can proceed through with. First off, let's say he wants to reuse a setting which he previously created. And then from here he has all of his settings which he made, in, made previously They've been synced up in the web database onto his computer. And they're all categorized by nature, I mean by environment, the speaker, and the date which he created it. From here, the user can then select one of the files, and choose to program with the current setting he selected. Or you could start from this file and maybe make some minor adjustments if he wasn't 
copy with you can view details or just delete the file from this list. The second option the user has from main window is to create a whole new setting for his hearing aids. From here the user will select an environment, let's say he plans to go on a hike with his friends, so he chooses nature, and he's with other friends and his uh, wife, he's kids at home, he selects those. And then from here, the environment file and the speaker, speakers which he selected become merged, and two samples are created, which are about four to five seconds long. Now depending on which sample sounds better, sample A or B, the user will select Make a selection. Yeah, just press. The user will make a selection, and then he has the option to create a title for the sentence he created, or just delete it. That's it. And then the third option the user has is when he's done, he just simply exit by pressing this button here. Now Justin Scores will continue. All right, just a few of the other recent updates we've had. We, through our collaboration with the internal hardware team, we were actually able to hook up our software through USB to the external sound card and output the sound through a speaker. So this was actually kind of a big milestone for us because it's actually working. And we also weren't originally sure if when you plug in the external sound card, it, it would automatically switch to outputting through that sound card, or if we would have to write our own script that would switch it, and we were glad to find out that it does automatically switch to the new sound card once you plug it in. We also had some recent updates to the budget, uh, to the budget. In adding the database, online database, we also added the cost of hosting the server, and the cost of a domain. Currently, we are covering both. And we also ordered a evaluation uh, card so that we could continue running some tests and make sure that our program is working properly on the evaluation board before we move on to the actual sound card. Looking quickly at our work breakdown structure, you can see some of the main parts to our project over there. And this chart shows you who should be working on each part of it what resources they will be using, and about how long each, first, each part should be taking. The next one is the Gantt chart. Uh, we're constantly updating this, and we look to it to make sure that we are on task and on schedule, and we know what we should be working on next. All right, so one thing that we've been able to do this semester uh, that we didn't get to last, last semester was go out and actually uh, communicate with people outside of the field of engineering. One of these instances with, was with uh, an actual professional audiologist uh, named Donna Esquid. And what we got to do there was learn how uh, she goes about actually uh, testing her patients, uh, what programs she uses. For example, we found out she uses NOAA, which is something we had never heard of. Um, and she took us into the environment where she actually uh, test the patient, uh, and we put, we'll put on here. Uh, we put on uh, earphones, and we'd be in this choir room, and she basically sends sounds to the earphones and ask us, you know, which ear do we hear it in, or how loud, or if we could hear it at all. Um, but overall, we learned a lot from her. We generated a lot of questions uh, that we have sent to uh, our client, um, and but overall, we uh, hope to, you know, add what we learned to our project. Uh, and another way that we were able to collaborate was with nursing. Uh, and because Tim from our team was the main interface with the nursing school, I'm going to tell you about that. All right. So we, we built this bridge with nursing to address our beta testing, which comes after we, God will, Lord willing, connect everything together in time and have our alpha testing done. So since we're engineers, we don't have too many connections to find um, subjects to do our tests on. So we created a bridge with nursing, who in turn have connections with the Janet Gowski Foundation, which is a senior citizen membership. There's a lot of people here who we could, we could um, have participate in our pilot study. And then we can see how they interact with our program 
and the whole ASP chip and all the hardware, see how they like it, see if they can do it themselves, and build up any, make any necessary improvements if necessary. So, we will continue with communication with the nursing, and we've set a scheduled date for March 21st to conduct our first pilot study at the Janet Gaskin Foundation. Marcel will conclude our presentation. So as a conclusion, I want to talk to you guys about our vision, what we want to do in the future as our project draws to almost an end. We want to be able to program the hearing aid, and that's basically our main task, because everything else now is pretty much done. And we want to do some research in that, and we do that as soon as possible. And we also have some technical and core participations including the alpha testing, which we scheduled on March 8th, and the beta testing that we are anticipated to have on March 21st. That concludes our presentation. You guys have questions? So, Dr. Could you guys remind me, of how long did you say you wanted this program to install it? Between 15 and 40. Second. Okay, so you also mentioned that you're going to be sending wave files over. That's how you're going to produce the sound. So are those, are you going to be required to say you have the CD and drive and use the program? Um, I believe the, are you talking about, so the wave files you're saying that's going to take a long time to, well, my yeah. thinking is that wave files are about a mega minute. You have hardware sentences, I don't know, thousands of those. So uh, I don't, assuming you're not going to install them in 15 seconds. Right. Uh, right now we only have about 24 or 48 total Harvard census, 24 for the men and women. Uh, and we are going to include them in the install, and 24 of them shouldn't be too bad. Um, but the, uh, the final product, it will not be included. I believe um, it will be on a USB or downloadable from our, the site, okay. is what uh, we talked about with Dan, uh, possibly one of those two solutions. I want to go back to the website that's up and running now. So you can yeah. you access that website now. Uh, it's not online, it's just uh, okay. on the local machines. Well, my yeah. question is um, as you well know, a lot of the people that are going to be using this product may not even have access to the web. So you'll still be able to calibrate your hearing aids for you without having access to the web. Is that right? Yeah. That's just for additional information and updates, like explains. Right. Yeah, I'll be able to put that yeah. local database. Yeah. You kind of think of it as like Dropbox. Whenever you open the Windows Forms application, the local database and the online database will automatically sync. So oh, okay. it will always be displayed as your settings. Provided they have access. Right. right. If they don't, it just goes straight to the Yeah, because a lot of them aren't even going to have Wi Fi. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how does the flash drive affect the local database? Do you have sufficient? <coughs> uh, you know, I have a flash drive. Do you mean? How much do you hold? On the flash drive? No, no, on the fact that you don't have flash drive. Local database. You should, it would largely depend on the actual hard drive of the computer. There's no set limitation. Okay, so you've got plenty of room. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's my question. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that. You're going to have all eight of your environments and a bunch of settings. Yeah. And have a recorded record of it. Yeah, on the web database interface, would you show that page? Which one? The one where you first log, who has login, username. Yes. I would, um, this is up to your client, of course, but I would recommend, just today, this happened with one of our secretaries, the standard thing when you log in with the username and password, and you have a thing, have you forgotten your password? Mm -hmm. Click here. Yeah. So you would have that available, and, and my guess is you're going to pull out. Use their email to communicate with them because yeah. if they're going to the online, they'll have an email. With them. That's how it'll be in there. They need to have it sent to them to reset their password. I would add that feature. Do you are planning to do that? Yeah, we will oh, okay, that. Yeah, okay, we actually good. discussed it earlier, but it wasn't a yeah. priority. Yeah, that's okay. I'm just saying that would be that. Yep. It happens yeah. all the time. Probably created an account for you as well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, we probably, since it was a 
customers are the only people who bought it. They figured that uh, these are just the initiatives that comes out. For our sales manual. For now, this. <laughs> So, so does that mean like everyone who bought the product, you would then give them a customized username? Like, sh would you ship that with the product, or like, like have a little packet they open up with their like username, or is it? Could be a possibility. Uh, that you're still thinking about. Think, yeah, we haven't really copied that. Either. Along those lines, uh, security would be an issue here because you don't want somebody, so any hackers out there, you don't want people to uh, be able to hack into someone's account, change your settings. This is the highlight of my tell that we probably use this product. Did you have any questions? I know, yeah, I noticed you mentioned yeah, you're using USB 3.0. Uh, that's a lot more than the problems that the people have in 3.0. You're saying USB? USB 3.0. Oh, yeah. USB 3.0. Right. Uh, that's not that common yet. Is it? Yeah. Well, the most good point at 3.0, don't they? Yeah. How long has 3.0 been out? I'm not sure about that. Yeah, it's not been very long. So. Um, you briefly, you um, no. yes. you briefly touched on the, um, <laughs> the <winter. laughs> on the budget part of it. Are you, are you, how are you guys doing on your budget? Are you within it, or what do you plan to come in? The only real expense is the evaluation board. The hosting and domain, uh, we're just using our own. Okay. Uh, I oh, think it was more uh, about the 3.0. We learned that at least to communicate to our system uh, that 3.0 is backwards compatible. So by saying if they go with 3.0, they're saying they're uh, they can also do 2.0. Okay, that's the, yeah. there's the answer. Right? Yeah, uh, I was wondering exactly. Wait, this seems to be incompatible. Right. You're yeah. worried about right. 500 milliamps for 2.0 right. and 3.0 with like an amp or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it is backward compatible. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> 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 